I wanted to push myself past where I'd ever been before. I wanted to do the 50K Ultra, an incredible feat for me, the longest run I've ever done in my life, the most elevation, the hardest terrain. It was my Masogi for the year. It was that one event that was gonna shape me and push me and really just seeing what I'm made of. A little over two weeks ago, we were preparing for the Squamish Ultra. It's a famous race in Canada. It's one of the most popular ones in the 50K category. And the Thursday before we were supposed to leave, a fire took off, the Kelowna wildfire. I thought the whole town was gonna burn down. So we go wake surfing, blue skies, but just this massive smoke line through the air, but we didn't think much of it. And then it got bad fast. As we're harking the boat, we could see the fire crest the top of the mountain. Two hours later, the whole side of the mountain's on fire. Most people were stunned. You could just see for miles, just people standing there watching this fire stand. Devastating wildfires ripped through the central Okanagan this afternoon. There was just no part of me that felt comfortable. Dan came home and he's like, we need to leave now. I have a responsibility to keep my family safe. Took us an hour and a half to pack up everything. We had to evacuate at like 10 p.m. And we left. Good thing we got out fast. That night, half the group had decided because of the wildfires that they weren't in the headspace. They weren't gonna do the race. The other half, we decided to make our way up to Squamish, about a two hour drive. And when we got there, there was smoke. We got a six out of 10 negative air score. Tomorrow morning, it's supposed to go to seven. It was a back and forth, back and forth. Curtis and I are still debating. Are we doing it? No, we're not doing it. The wives are like, that's a good decision. Then we decide we're gonna go register. They don't know that we just checked in though. I haven't told her. They're all like, oh, I'm proud of them making the right decision. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore. We'll see. We'll see what she thinks, but. It was a very unhealthy day in Squamish. The smoke was unbelievable. Bad. And the smoke kept getting worse and worse and worse. They eventually get to a place where a lot of people were not doing the race. If you're out on a mountain range and all of a sudden the wind shifts or blows harder, you're in the middle of it, where are you gonna run to? Do you really wanna put your body and your lungs at risk at that level? I had to be honest with myself. Like, why am I doing this? Eventually we just decided it wasn't worth the downside. There's part of me that was relieved. I genuinely believe for the sake of his health that that smoke was gonna affect him. But I knew in the back of my mind that he was gonna run it someday. I want a race. Trained, showed up, consistent, vacations, run. Weekends, run. Don't feel like running, run. He can't just train for it, talk about it, and not do it. This is Dan. I just kept having this nagging feeling. I was like, am I really not gonna do a 50 this year? That was the part that was eating me up inside. When you say you're gonna do something, you gotta do it. The Monday after, I was in the gym, I was training, I was lifting, and I just took out my phone, I messaged Dave, I said, I'm doing a 50 on Sunday. He's like, you're seriously gonna do it? And I said, yeah, I'm gonna do it. Essentially, we got on a Zoom call and designed, so it's 54K is the route that we've designed to do, but it is gnarly. When Dan wanted to run the 50K on his own course, I just thought, of course he's gonna do this. The fact that I'm doing this unsupported is crazy. If he like gets hurt, it'd be probably like a kilometer walk from the closest thing nearby. Nobody recommends this. Unsupported, by myself, it's an ultra. It's my first, I've never done it before. So man, I'm looking forward to it. I slept really good. That's always the saving grace. I got up so early. Why are you so I always get up early, ding dong. I know, I'm getting ready and I'm going. Have a morning routine, just had my peanut butter, banana, bagel, coffee. I want to get the coffee in early, some electrolytes, make sure I'm well hydrated. All right, I'm gonna see you guys at the finish line. Thanks, bud. Chop wood, carry water. <laughs> How do you run 50K? One foot in front of the other. If you look at the route, so backside of that mountain with the tower, Highway 33 on your way to Big White, in there, start, back, all the way up to the top of that peak, down, 
across the valley, hit Mount Baldy, come up all the way on the backside of this, then all the way to the top of that mountain, all the way to the top of that mountain, all the way down, and then all the way up that ridge to the backside, pretty much where McKinley is, all the way up uh, across those humps. It's almost like the backside of a dinosaur. And then I scoot across all the way back down the valley, up into Knox. I gotta run up Ogopogo Trail, which is about 500 meters straight up. That would be mile kilometer 40. <laughs> it's just stupid. Yeah, the plan is to finish here. Let's go start one foot in front of the other. It's getting real, dude. <laughs> Prepped, ready to go. I'm doing it for the firefighters today. My big why for my run was for the BC firefighters. The guys that gave themselves their lives to save our homes. Starting the run, pretty much running to the top of that. It's called Black Mountain. Here we go. Almost an hour in. First peak in sight right there. Oh my gosh, what a day. Pace is good, the pace is good. My buddy Dave surprised me with an aid station on the first big traverse up and down a mountain, about 20K in. And then he ran with me for about 12K. He's come to join the assault. He actually created it. Which I absolutely needed. It was super fun just hanging out. I'm at 22, 23K, halfway. The thing about racing is that the challenge doesn't start until more than halfway. And it was like kilometer 30, 32, where we came down this major two kilometer downhill my legs stopped. It was like, I couldn't turn them over. Turns out after about four hours of running up and down mountains, your legs don't want to respond. I was walking, I was trying to run. My left knee started to hurt and I was worried. I started thinking to myself like, am I gonna have to walk the rest of this? Like, am I gonna have to walk for the next 15K? And I was thinking, what's that time gonna look like? And I was like, no, no, I'm here to race. Dan does Ironmans and 50K ultras and swims eight kilometers across the lake because it's his addiction and it's a healthy one. I learn so much about myself when I suffer. Every race I've ever done, the last 10% is when I've learned something about myself. The very last part of the race was straight up Literally almost stairs. It's got a huge uphill, 300 meters elevation, 47 kilometers in, three left. And it took everything I had inside. I was sweating profusely. It was super hot out. I just had to keep reminding myself that I get to. All I keep thinking about is that I get to do this. I get to race. I get to run. I get to move my body. I get to be here today. And it was just such an important reminder for me to just get past the pain of going straight up the mountain. 1.2 kilometers left. Oh. Everything I do is to be better for Max and Noah and Renee. I didn't expect to see them there. When I saw them in the woods, they were cheering me on and I just broke down. Oh, it was such a beautiful moment. <laughs> I gave them the hugs and kisses and I kept going and dropped down the hill and I looked back and Max and Noah were running behind me. You guys gonna keep coming? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Keep going. If you ask my kids, what does it mean to be a Martell? They're gonna tell you. That we can do hard things. Kids don't listen to what you say. They watch what you do. Because one of our values as a family is Martells do hard things. Woo! To run with them for that last kilometer, that made this race better than any race I'd ever run before because that happened. The easiest way to apply the philosophies I'm sharing today in your life is just get up and go to the gym. And if you've been going for 45 minutes, go for an hour. If you've been lifting 60 pound weights, go to 65. Like whatever part of your life that you know there's an opportunity to add a little extra, just do that. That's all I'm doing. People see my chapter, you know, let's call it 25, and they compare that against their chapter three. That's just not fair. Don't think, well, I could never do that. You absolutely could. You can learn over time to build the capacity to do it. I'm just suggesting 
Start today with something simple. If you haven't worked out in a while, go outside for a walk. Don't allow yourself to not push yourself a little bit today.